In today's episode of EU4, you will learn the history of a certain Italian country. More precisely, the Florentine theocracy, with very unique ideas, ultimately with a very unusual religion, all to gather bonuses for province development. Additionally, I will use a mod for a new graphical look, this one. So let me know if you like it. And yes, this mod is Iron Man friendly. Welcome imperialists, Lucas here. Florence is a truly rich and powerful Italian republic, more precisely an Italian signoria, which means a republic ruled by powerful families, in Florence's case the famous Medici family. There was even a show about it. In a way, Florence was also part of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. The Medici family made Florence powerful and great, but that was just the beginning of its journey to greatness, the unification of Tuscany and maybe later Italy. However, who knows, history can take a very strange turn. The Medici family, like Florence, had one arch enemy, the Pope, sitting on the papal throne who envied Florence's wealth and even saw Florence as a threat. A few other countries also disliked the Republic. For Unfortunately, the papacy had other enemies that Florence could use. For example, the Habsburg Archduchy. First, Cosimo hired valuable advisors. Then he dealt with the social classes in Florence, to whom he had to grant certain common privileges. The Florentine fleet was on a mission to hunt pirates and counteract them, because the threat of pirates from Magraviate was really real. There was also an alliance with the powerful Burgundy, as well as a royal marriage with the Habsburgs. Although relations with the papacy were really tense, they did not decide to officially condemn the Pope because it would have been met with very negative attitudes from most of Florence's neighbors. However, Cosimo told the Pope what he really thought of him. The first mercenary company was also hired, which soon allowed an alliance with the Austrian Emperor to be formed. Secret preparations were also made for an invasion of Lucca and its annexation to the Florentine Republic. Unfortunately, Florence's path does not lead to quick conquests, although not entirely. An alliance was also made with the Duchy of Savoy because we had a few common enemies. Cosimo de' Medici was very diplomatically talented and established many relationships, thanks to which Florence was well perceived. And by making strategic alliances with smaller Italian duchies, such as Saluzzo, he led to the formation of a small Italian league independent of the German duchies. This allowed Florence to already reach for some territorial gains in Italy. Unfortunately, every potential war involved a very large number of stronger opponents. <coughs> Therefore, initially, the ruler of Florence focused on improving relations with his most powerful allies. However, after a short time, it turned out that the Franco-Provencal alliance was broken. Provence remained only with a very weak alliance with Utrecht. Meanwhile, in the Provence region, there was a very valuable natural port that could increase the importance of Florentine merchants in the region. Therefore, loans were taken again, and the situation in the country was stabilized. Permission was obtained from the Duchy of Savoy, on whose territory the Flor Florentine army was transported by the fleet. After a while, a great battle ensued in which we received help from the Duchy of Burgundy, which separately attacked Provence. The armies of Provence were defeated, and the capital of Provence was besieged by Florentine troops. The Provencal armies tried to react to the siege of their capital, but realistically, they had no chance against their army until the ultimate destruction of the Provencal army. Fortunately, the Florentine commander Luigi Passi. Passi? This commander is quite good at capturing forts. Unfortunately, the Florentine fleet was weaker than the Provencal one, so it had to resort to a certain trickery. However, unlike the Provencal fleet, it had places to repair, while the Provencal fleet did not. After one of the subsequent battles, the Provencal fleet ceases to exist. Literally, after such a defeat, Provence has no choice but to surrender unconditionally. The Florentine army remained in Provence to secure the region from rebels. Newly acquired territories mostly went to the Republic, and the family managed. In year 51, news reached Cosimo de' Medici from Venice, which was at war with the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire. Therefore, Cosimo decided to seize the opportunity to attack the Republic of Siena with allies. Both Siena and Bologna were quickly destroyed and the cities were swiftly besieged. Unfortunately, Cosimo was excommunicated by the Pope for this act. Fortunately, the Medici family was very wealthy, and as we know, Florentine ducas are the best remedy for absolution. Meanwhile, Florentine merchants worked on improving Florence's perception in the region. The Republic of Venice was forced to pay reparations, as was Bologna. The lands of the Republic of Siena were annexed to Florence. The finest thinkers, artists and scholars from Saluzzo were then invited to enrich Florence with the latest innovations, leading to the Florentine Renaissance. In Siena, a new method of crystal cutting emerged, making them more valuable in the international market and influencing trade value. Thanks to war reparations and loans, Florence acquired funds to 
expand its seaports. Florence was chosen as the next meeting place for the Reichstag, owing to its considerable power and good relations with the Habsburgs. The Florentine Republic was truly innovative. Construction of new markets for merchants began in Pisa and other Florentine cities. By 1460, many Italian states pursued independent policies separate from German politics. If the emperor does not influence the Italian states, they may leave the Holy Roman Empire. Meanwhile, Florence subdued the Republic of Lucca and Genoa. Maritime victory was swiftly achieved. Unfortunately, the policies of the Holy Roman Empire failed, and most Italian states decided to leave it, leaving the emperor powerless. The Florentine Republic, however, remained faithful to the empire because Cosimo, the elder de' Medici, wanted to exploit the advantage that imperial protection provided in the process of unifying Italy at least until the alliance with Austria persisted. Unfortunately, fortress in Florence fell, leading to Genoese forces occupying the entire region of Tuscany. Fortunately, the city itself did not suffer much. However, during the war with Luca in 62, Cosimo de' Medici was killed. The war with Luca ended in final victory and the entire region of Tuscany will now be under Florence's rule. Thanks to these actions, Florence achieved great international splendor. The Republic's military actions will now be more justified. Unfortunately, the Kingdom of France effectively blocked further military actions by Florence in the Italian region. Therefore, Florence had to seize opportunities, such as Avignon breaking away from the papacy and declaring itself the heir to the Duchy of Provence. Further governmental reforms were also carried out. After about 30 years, under Rudolf Medici's rule, Florence had another chance to expand. Naples revolted against French rule, making it an easy target for conquest. Fortunately, Naples had lost many of its fortresses in previous wars, facilitating Florence's occupation after defeating the Neapolitan army. Florence employed the Tuscan Free Company, skilled in fortress conquest and battle. A Hungarian incursion, though initially perceived as a threat, posed little challenge, paving the way for subsequent invasions by Czech and Polish forces. Following the fall of Zagreb and the pivotal fortress with Within, Hungary opted to pay tribute to Florence in exchange for peace, injecting a positive stimulus into Florence's economy facilitating several pivotal reforms. Following the war with Naples, Florence annexed the wealthier parts, especially the Genoese trade region. With Florence's military still active, they turned their attention to Milan to thwart its ambitions in Italy. Unfortunately, the Papal States conquered the remaining half of Naples. The Pazzi Conspiracy, the Pazzi Banking Family, bitter rivals of the No Dynasty family and the Gonfaloniere have conspired to over overthrow the Signora and install themselves as rulers of Florence. Many of the most powerful figures in Florentine politics are participants in the vile plot, ranging from merchants to clergymen to nobles. The Pazzi plan to assassinate Rudolfo de' Medici during Big Mass at the Duomo and then to capture the Palazzo della Signora and seize the reins of government. Should the conspiracy fail, however, most of the political enemies of the Signora would be branded as criminals and the Noa dynasty would therefore rule practically unopposed. It's it's probably time to sort things out in Florence and hang all the supporters of the Pachi family. Well, it's time for some fun. Especially since we're at war, how can they oppose the Republic like this? The war with Milan ended with the display of Florence's military might. This marked the golden era of Florence, positively influencing administrative thought nationwide. Further developing the Republican tradition in Florence was crucial, made easier during the golden era. Unfortunately, in 1779, the Florentine population was swayed by a charismatic cleric. Savonarola rises for the past few years, a preacher has been catching the attention of the people of Florence. Girolamo Savonarola has spoken fiercely against the Gonfalonieres, the Pope himself, and has even predicted Judgment Day to be fast approaching. Regrettably, he garnered significant support, prompting the Medici to flee Florence. Thus, the millennial theocracy was born. Concurrently, the Florentine Aragonese War erupted about those islands. Oh, I forgot their names again. The Kingdom of Aragon was backed by France, while Florence received support from Burgundy, Castile, and Saluzzo. Unfortunately, the Austrian Emperor declined to support Florence. Swiftly seizing Paris and coaxing France out of the war became pivotal for military operations. Meanwhile, Florentine fortresses prepared for extended sieges. The Pope condemns Savonarola. News of Savonarola's deeds has spread to the archheretic himself, the Pope of Rome. Unsurprisingly, the Pontiff has condemned the preacher and called for his immediate trial at the Vatican. Surely, the Pope was simply misguided. The Florentine Castilian fleet sunk the Aragonese fleet off the coast of Catalonia. More and more Florentines flocked to the Dominican sermons. His followers are growing. French troops were swiftly defeated and their fortresses captured, allowing Florence to pay a huge tribute to its allies. Also, Florence will receive a prize
province from which the Duchy of Toulouse will emerge. The Aragonés armies were rooted after the capture of the fortress in Oscar. Victory. Reforming Republican practices, Savonarola's great mission is not just the purification of Firenze, but the return of the city to its people. It will take much work to bring Firenze back to the glory days of the Republic. Of course, the Florentines' people worked. The war with Aragon also led to the acquisition of properties in Tunis, Sicily and Catalonia. And after releasing vassals, it became possible to establish a special privilege for strong duchies. Florence, the bonfire of the vanities. The people of Firenze desire nothing more than to be cleansed of their sins and Savonarola will guide them. Every person has their blasphemous texts or false idols or needless luxuries. Burn your sins, Florence. Burn your sin. Um, but I kept choosing the option for a theocracy. WTF. Okay, the Dominican is still alive. After the war with the Republic of Aragon ended, it was time to attack the smaller Islamic states in North Africa. Then they attacked the Sultanate of Tlemcen, all to finally rid themselves of the pirate threat from Margrabi. The biggest challenge during this war was the widespread rebellion of the local population. Savonarola, the prophet, pillars of smoke rise from the city of Firenze as the people burn their vanities. Crowds gather to witness the burning of witches and heretics. The ranks of the weepers, the devoted followers of the prophet, have swelled as Savonarola cements his rule over the hearts of our citizens. The end of days approaches. We pray for salvation. Order has finally been restored in Florence. The Medicis have been expelled from the city. It's highly unlikely they will ever return or be welcomed back. Thanks to this, the situation in Florence has stabilized. The Medicis probably fled to Castile. That's what it seems like. Florence has undergone a thorough government reform. After seizing most of the Margrabi territories, Sunni Islam became the dominant religion in Florence, and Savonarola began to respect the religion and take an interest in its doctrines. Re-establishing administration in the conquered territories will take some time. Then the Prophet led the Florentine troops further into the desert, because there was a sect of Islam here that aligned with Florentine values. Money, banking, trade, you know, Sunni betrayal in Orano. Our war against the Sunni has not gone unnoticed by their local supporters. In Orano, traitors who hold faith before country have taken the opportunity to rise up and attack us, perhaps hoping to aid the enemy or encourage other Sunni nations to join the war. Faith determines the path of all, even the wicked. By the way, we found more gold in Tafilali, right here. Unfortunately, in the year 95, the Florentine-Burgundian alliance ended. The Burgundian nobility decided to cede power to Britain. Yes, Britain, because Great Britain doesn't exist yet. As a result of the intervention of the Holy Roman Emperor, the northern part of Burgundy was divided into smaller duchies, which were then incorporated into the empire. Another war broke out with the Republic of Aragon, in which troops were defeated, but unfortunately Unfortunately, a sizable portion remains in Europe. And as for Castile, despite having 41,000 troops, it's unclear where exactly those troops are. Florentine armies had to quickly return home as Florence came under siege by Aragonese forces, who had completely abandoned their own territory. The Aragonese armies were decisively defeated once again, unsurprising given they were mere peasants. England itself agreed to a white peace treaty with Florence. Unfortunately, the war proved highly draining for Florence. Additionally, numerous uprisings erupted in Margravi among the local populace. Florence allocated its wealth primarily to the development of its manufactories and workshops, secondarily to the judiciary. News of the the discovery of a new world reached Florence, sparking colonial ambitions. Despite the expansion of gold mines without proselytizing, Florence reaped significant benefits. The great artist Michelangelo graced the Florentine court, demanding minimal fees like any true artist in pursuit of their passion. In his final years, the prophet of Florence devoted himself to expanding the Margraviates, aiming to bolster the significance of Sunni Islam in Florence. However, the older our prophet grew, the more inscrutable his actions became. He decided to depart from the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation and designate Mimzab as Florence's new capital, subsequently making Ibadi the new Florentine religion. This pleased many Islamic nations worldwide, and Florence itself adhered to the Malik doctrine, conducive to development. Since Florence was a highly tolerant nation, it introduced the Dimi status. Naturally, the religious shift bore consequences for Florence. For instance, the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore no longer exerted positive effects on the country. Several Privileges were also granted to the Dimi class, as Catholicism had long been an integral part of Florentine culture. Sunni Muslims, on the other hand, were uniformly compelled to convert. Reports reached us that Britain inherited Brandenburg. Hey, where's my land? What's going on here? After several years, our magnificent prophet found the sunny weather in Mzab being a pure desert unsuitable, prompting him to relocate Florence's capital not to Florence, but to Luca. 
Following the integration of Sicily and its inclusion in Florence, it was time to develop the cities in this region. Scholars from various Islamic schools were also invited. It was also time to finally deal with that heretic from Rome. Well, now they're just infidels. But remember, he wanted to burn our prophet at the stake. Just before the end of the Age of Discoveries, peace was concluded with the Pope, resulting in Rome's annexation into the Florentine theocracy. Finally, the moment came to reclaim provinces for the Duchy of Toulouse. After all, we can't leave our brethren in faith to fend for themselves. We'll enlist the help of Austria and Castile. Hunting accident. Unfortunately, our successor perished. Florentine mercenaries effortlessly crushed the French army. The war with France proceeded remarkably well, with most fortresses falling within six months and the French army being truly sparse. Ultimately, the war concluded with the enlargement of the Duchy of Toulouse and the release of the Duchy of Gascony. Actually, it was a theocracy. In the subsequent years, Florence focused more on diplomatic endeavors, gaining influence in places like Bologna, later in Parma, Mantua, or Saluzzo, also in Genoa, making these minor Italian duchies its vassals, which would then be peacefully annexed into Florence. This period also saw extensive development across Italy under the rule of the Florentine theocracy, primarily focusing on production and human resources. Massive public works also commenced in Florence. Should I expand Florence by an additional 15 points? Okay. After a brief war with Aragon, Florence reclaimed territories in Maghrebet as well as the remaining lands from Aragon in Africa and islands in the Mediterranean Sea. However, not everyone was pleased with this. Nevertheless, Florence ascended to an empire, specifically the Tuscan Empire. Hey, there were supposed to be new missions, but I don't see any. Sorry, I prefer the red color then. Subsequently, following the fall of the Aragonese Republic, it was France's turn to relinquish its holdings in the Gascony duchies. The French armies were now but a shadow of their former might. They were easily vanquished in minor skirmishes unable to withstand the might of the Florentine army. For the next 14 years, Florence experienced a flourishing, emerging as one of the most powerful European states, second only to the Ottoman Empire. It even surpassed the Russian Empire. Most of its provinces were highly developed and thriving, experiencing an economic boom. The coffers of Florence overflowed with ducats, enabling it to field formidable armies. The council comprised eminent statesmen who spared no effort in ensuring Florence's prosperity. It was also a period marked by anticipation for a reduction in international tensions following earlier conquests by Florence. The Christian world, divided as it was, feared Sunni invasions. Florence's merchants flourished and extended their influence into Lombardy. After acquiring the Genoan Republic, the Academy of Brown was established, enhancing Florence's diplomatic capabilities. Subsequently, war was declared on Venice to reclaim the Genoese province, with Britain and Austria summoned for assistance. Unfortunately, a schism erupted among Catholics, sparking a religious war in Europe. Our adversaries stand little chance. The most challenging aspect of the war with Venice was capturing their mountain fortresses, which were numerous. The religious war, however, was hardly worth mentioning. For some reason, the Czechs decided to lose the war early on, attacking an opponent three to four times their size. Florence's armies weren't even necessary. The Florentine theocracy became even holier, further contributing to its future development. The religious war in the empire concluded in victory for the Catholics. Newly conquered territories experienced a period of prosperity and were heavily developed by the theocracy. Consequently, Florence emerged as the mightiest empire in the world, realizing its dreams of grandeur, the Florentine. Theocracy even transformed desolate deserts into thriving cities. In the year 67, the false pope was finally expelled from Italy, with all his holdings seized. After a few years, it was time for another war with Venice, aiming to occupy their richest territories and deplete my entire transport fleet. Yet, the Venetian forces were utterly routed. The theocracy embarked on its final wars to conquer the entire Italian region. Meanwhile, diplomacy worked diligently to prevent a massive German coalition. Unfortunately, the darkest scenario materialized. A grand coalition of German states formed against the Florentine theocracy. Developing more valuable provinces in Africa was remarkably inexpensive, a much like in the entire theocracy. Unfortunately, all this development coincided with the reign of a rather mediocre ruler. The entire Italian region of Florence is exceptionally verdant. It could have been even greener with the creation of Italy, especially since there are missions for development here too. Yet I believe the future holds something entirely different for the Florentine theocracy, although it might lead to conflict with a certain empire. In this episode, you can see how I created the the mighty empire of the United States when I embarked on my adventure with the Aztecs. Additionally, I showcase a few neat tricks there. 